Okay, friends and neighbors, it's DK here with Mr. V Amps, and we're going to take a break from uh, dealing with the classic amplifiers that defined a generation of rock and roll and look at an amplifier that defined the generation of the first amplifier that somebody ever owned for probably the 80s and maybe early 90s. This is a Gorilla GG25. It was brought here, and the gent said, hey, if you can make it work, well, uh, you know, I, I, I know him. He probably donated to a kid or something to get started, which is cool, or, you know, make use of it. But uh, anyway, I haven't uh, really done much with it. I've just plugged it in. And okay, well, it does that. Okay, so I think the buzziness has something to do with the input jack. If the input jack isn't buzzy, well, it does produce sound. And then our full tube stack switch here is our super overdrive circuit thing. All right. So it, it wants to work, but we have really crispy pots and a questionable input jack. This seems like the typical kind of thing that uh, we deal with on older stuff. These amps are generally pretty tough. They're not poorly made, even though they're inexpensive. They're, they usually come right back. So let's just pop the chassis out of this, clean the circuits, and take a look at that input jack. Okay, so pretty straightforward amp here. We've got a, this is TP53130N. That's probably an op amp. I'm not a thousand percent sure, but I'm pretty certain. And our output chip is the legendary TDA2030, the chip that powered a couple bajillion practice amps over the years. Um, actually, surprisingly big pots, you know, good sized pots and a questionably janky input jack that probably just needs a good clean. So we'll pull out the uh, Max Pro uh, pot cleaner and the contact cleaner for our jack and uh, see how that does. Okay, so I would love to say this was a really involved video, but um, Max Pro electronics lubricant and Max Pro contact cleaner the contact cleaner is fine to put in the pots, but you got to follow it up with the lubricant. Um, if the pot is really bad, if the pot is really bad, use the contact cleaner. If it's not, just use the lubricant because it does have some cleaning properties. And then spin the pot back and forth a lot of times, like 10, 20, 30, something like that. It'll clean right up. The input jack, I used a little bit of contact cleaner and a Q-tip to clean all the tips. And then I also sprayed the tip of my cable here with some contact cleaner, shoved that in there and wiggled it around, and now we're in pretty good shape. Um, in the case of any of these amplifiers that have a TDA in them, do not turn them on without attaching a speaker. The factory speaker for this was a 4-ohm speaker. I put a 8-ohm speaker on it, but it doesn't really matter much. It just needs a speaker. Otherwise, the TDA chip loves to blow itself up if you turn them on without a speaker on it. Um, this amp being older, it could probably it probably could benefit from being recapped, but it just doesn't have a lot of street value, and it's not humming, so it's working well enough. So I think just a little bit of a brief cleanup on the controls will get it back to operable for the purposes that they intend to use it. I don't think we're going to be recording any albums with this. Curses. I didn't hear it until I put the lid back on. There's... There's a bit of a hum there. More than I like. Okay, so I didn't film it because it wouldn't involve too much curse words. They really didn't make it easy to take this board out. All the wires are just like barely the right length, so you got to desolder some stuff and fight and whatever. But I did get filter caps in here. I hope it yields something. Okay, so yeah, that did 
yield some significant improvement. The 2200 actually tested fairly good, but the 1000 microfarad filter cap tested like garbage. That's where they'll both be going. Um, those were in there since 1985, and they provide the electrical filtering. It's not dead silent, but it's not humming nearly like it did. Yay. Let's rock and roll. working.